Welcome back to another What I Eat in a Week. It's been a minute. This past week was filled with friends and events and lots of really good food. The recipes in this one are pretty easy, I would say mostly improvised and definitely quite random at times. Let me know if you end up trying any of these ideas. Also, feel free to click the like button before we get started. That'd be really nice. And let's begin! This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So Monday's breakfast was a bowl of soy yogurt topped with this homemade raw granola. Tastes like banana bread, basically. Inside a blender or a food processor, place some soft dates, half a banana, peanut butter, a little bit of cinnamon, some roasted sesame seeds, some chia or flax seeds, oats, and a little bit of salt. If needed, add a bit of water to help everything blend. I cut the other banana half into slices and added those on top here, finishing everything off with a sprinkle of cinnamon. For lunch, I made some pasta, using up random things that I could find in my fridge. First, I cut up an onion, some smoked tofu, and a few sun-dried tomatoes. Then, using the oil from the tomatoes, I pan-fried everything for about 6 minutes. The pasta that I went for here was a mix of lentil pasta and wheat pasta. After almost burning my tofu, I added some fresh baby spinach to it, also some leftover hummus, and some pasta water. Then I added some vinegar and a bit more salt for the flavor um, before mixing in the pasta. This was so good! Here I am rushing to the central lost and found office just before closing time. You know, in general, government offices aren't like the most fun places. The lost and found office, however, it's one of the happiest places I think I've ever been to. Like people's days are being made constantly by them having their phones, their passports, their wallets back. Anyway, back to the food. Um, here I am snacking on a red bean filled mochi. Delicious. I once tried making these myself and sort of kind of succeeded. Um, I will link my recipe attempt in the description if you're interested. That afternoon, I did some recipe testing and filming for an upcoming matcha drink video. If it's already out by the time that you're watching this, then I will link that down below. Yeah, we, we kind of experimented with different ratios and ended up being super happy with the end result. That evening, I met up with my friend Julie to skate and eat dumplings. Sadly, the dumpling place forgot to add our sauces, which is kind of like the best part about getting these. So that was really tragic, and I could not imagine a worse thing to happen to either of us. We also had this vegan fried chicken bao bun that's just out of this world, and that kind of made up for the loss of sauces. The takeout place is called Han West. It's really close to the Temple of Afed, which is where we skated, and it's really yummy. You should definitely go and check them out. I came home pretty late. Before bed, I had one more treat. Um, this is some almond milk chocolate. It's really good. For Tuesday's breakfast, I decided on a little smoothie bowl. So to my blender, I added some barely frozen bananas, soy yogurt, chocolate protein powder, a little bit of unsweetened cacao, some almond butter, and a bit of salt and cinnamon. Oh, and ice cubes, right. Maybe just an idea of what could be. I topped everything with more of that raw granola from the day before and some raspberries. It's scary to give them room. Next, I did some more matcha experimenting. Um, this one has more of a peach flavor to it. I tested multiple versions here using different ratios and different kinds of vegan milk. 
Yeah, the amount of matcha I'm consuming this week is truly concerning. Now, for lunch, I'm just gonna have the noodles from yesterday, but I'm gonna make a bit of a pasta salad out of it. So I'm just gonna be adding some random vegetables that I can find in my fridge and um, call it a day. Okay, really, it was just cucumber and cilantro that I ended up adding. Oh, and um, baby spinach. On Tuesday night, I happened to find myself at this really wonderful and exciting dinner. Guten Appetit! So Max is currently doing a bit of a cookbook tour, bringing different food creators together and treating them to some really lovely food. It was hosted at this zero-waste restaurant called Hapa. All of these meals can be found in Max's new cookbook called You Can Cook This. Anything. <laughs> living the life here. Thank you so much to Max and DK for having me. Afterwards, whilst heading home, I made a quick stop at HBT and got myself a little rhubarb lemonade to process everything. I still had a bit of that banana bread, raw nola, left over, and so I wanted to see what would happen if I shaped this mix into little cookies and pan fried them for about four minutes on each side. These were super yummy, but not quite filling enough to make up for a whole breakfast. And so I had some muesli as well. Now for a reason that is simply just my friend's goofiness, I was graciously gifted the new Elevator Boy cereal recently. And here's my review. Um, this tastes like Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Cinnamonies, but minus all the satisfying sweetness, which makes this probably a lot healthier, so I, I give it that. Um, however, the shape, I would have not approved, but maybe that's just me. Moving on. <laughs> For lunch, I reheated the last bit of Max's curry from the night before. I mean, I had to make it quite watery, but it was still super flavorful. I also had like one to two of these homemade flatbreads. Wednesday was quite exciting because I got to shoot a few matcha recipes in Artemis's kitchen. Matcha recipe number one was this cloudy lavender cheesecake iced matcha. It's amazing. I feel like my anxiety is like cured now. Matcha number two was a vanilla matcha martini. It tastes like straight up matcha vanilla ice cream i want to figure out like a mocktail version here as well not quite sure on how to do that yet then we made our way to the fu which is one of the big universities in berlin they hosted a free concert that day paula hartmann was the main act if you're into very vibey heartbreak music I highly recommend checking her out. Continuing on with the matcha theme, we then snacked on these matcha rice crackers. I was so hungry coming back, and so I just had these toasts with hummus and cucumber and a bit of chili mayo. We can't forget about this vegan nougat chocolate, possibly the best vegan chocolate treat I've ever consumed. Thursday morning, I made some oatmeal consisting of small cut oats, desiccated coconut, some biscoff to sweeten everything a bit, almond butter, and some salt. Then I added some oat milk and water, letting this cook over medium heat for about six minutes. For toppings, I kept things simple and just added a green apple. Also, I had more coffee. Later on, I had some more hummus on toast. This company called Planted hosted a little barbecue rooftop happening. This week, 
kind of makes it seem like I'm hopping from one influencer event to the next. But really, this is all super, super new to me. Even though I've been doing YouTube for so, so long, this is only my third Berlin event that I ever got to attend. And yeah, it was just really nice to get to see my friend in this beautiful rooftop setting. My Friday morning started out with another cup of coffee. I also snacked on some raspberries and this cookie dough vegan protein bar that really just tastes like a candy bar. I love it. It's been getting really warm lately, so I can finally have smoothies without having to cling to hot water bottles at the same time. For this one here, I blended a bunch of frozen strawberries, a banana, some vanilla protein powder, some almond butter, a bit of salt, That day, I decided to test a recipe that I've been meaning to try for a while now. Um, I wanted to see what would happen if you deep fried oyster mushrooms. Step number one, create the flour mixture. In a mixing bowl, add the flour, cornstarch, nutritional yeast, sugar, vegetable broth powder, onion powder, black pepper, and baking powder. Mix well and then divide that between two smaller bowls. Next, combine all the wet ingredients. That would be some vegan cream or plant-based milk of any kind, vinegar and hot sauce. And then to a last final little bowl, you're going to add just a few tablespoons of panko. We'll be filling this up as we go, as to ensure that the breadcrumbs don't become completely soggy. You won't need to use a whole bunch of oil. I added enough oil so that it would be about five, six centimeters deep, if that makes any sense. Now onto the coating or breading of the mushrooms. Dunk each one into one of the flour bowls, then into the wet ingredients. And then finally into the panko breadcrumbs. Oh my god, it's happening! Allow the mushrooms to cook for about one to two minutes on each side until cooked through and golden brown. What I'm drizzling on top here is basically a hot syrup mixture consisting of rice syrup, oil, and vinegar. This can be added, but it can also be omitted. I ended up dipping them into this sauce here. And then a few of these I added to a wrap together with more of that sauce and some steamed broccoli. In the afternoon, I made myself this fun little drink. It's inspired by one of the cocktails that me and Ima had the night before. So it's basically ice, lemon juice, sliced ginger, cucumber, some fresh mint, which I should have left on the stem, and some ginger ale, and a bit of water to adjust the sweetness. This is so yummy, I had like two or three of these. I still had quite a few mushrooms left over, and I really wanted to see if it would also work to bake them. I didn't have enough panko breadcrumbs left over though, and so most of them I dipped into the flour bowl first, then into the wet ingredients, and then into the second flour bowl. I put them all on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, the oven was preheating to 200 degrees celsius, and just before baking, I lightly brushed them with a tiny bit of sunflower seed oil. I let them bake for around 30 minutes until they came out all crispy and golden brown. They definitely taste a bit less rich than the deep fried version, but still super delicious, super nice in salads or sandwiches. I served these next to some cooked rice, cucumber, and beets. I ate two servings here whilst watching The Hunger Games for research. Saturday, I finally took the time to make these chocolate chip pancakes. 
I use my classic pancake recipe here. It's from my cookbook, All Day Vegan. This cookbook has over 100 amazing bonus recipes. Some of them might sound familiar, but they're all new and improved versions. It's available in English and German and I love it so much. So yeah, as I said, I followed my recipe, except instead of the applesauce, I used mashed banana. And in the end, I of course folded in some chocolate chips. For lunch, I went to this really, really awesome vegan cafe called Greenfinch. There I met up with a new friend. We met really randomly. A couple weeks ago, I went to the Noelle Miller stand-up show and me and this person sat next to each other and then quickly realized that both of us were there alone. I don't know about you, but for me, it's so rare these days making friends with strangers in the wild. Like as an adult, you usually meet through friends or work or through the internet. If you have a friendship meet cute story of your own, feel free to leave it in the comments. I would love to read that. Dinner was these delicious and quite random noodles. In a nonstick skillet, I let some chopped onion, ginger, and chili flakes cook for about six minutes. I then also added the last few leftover oyster mushrooms that I had in my fridge. Some chickpeas went in there. I gave that about five minutes. Here I'm making a quick little sauce consisting of miso paste, water, white wine vinegar, and rice syrup. I also seasoned everything with some more of that Caesar salad ready-made sauce. I had a bit more of that pancake batter left over in the fridge. The outcome of the pancake was a bit more dense, but at the same time, honestly, even more flavorful than usual because everything had so long to like chill and marinate. I added a bunch of berries and some peanut butter here. This was really nice. For lunch, I went to another cafe. This one is called Sfera. It's another fully vegan cafe. They serve the most artistic vegan food I've ever seen. I went there to see Rosa. She's a wonderful recipe creator. Definitely check her out. As an afternoon snack, I had some peaches topped with white almond butter. Oh, and then my dinner was really yummy as well. I brought both my nonstick skillet and my grilling pan to medium heat. Remember Planted, the brand from the barbecue dinner? They had also sent me some of their products a while ago, including this barbecue skewer. So I cooked that up according to the packaging. Meanwhile, in my other pan, I placed one tortilla and added some vegan cheese to one side, the leftover steamed broccoli from the night before, some vegan chili mayo. I fold it over one side here and then let this cook for about two minutes on each side or until the outside was nice and crispy and the cheese was fully melted. I need to make this quesadilla thing more often. Like, this was so good. And that concludes my week, my week of food and just so much socializing. I don't usually see this many people in a week. I think I'm gonna need at least a few days to like isolate myself a bit. Anyway, thank you to Squarespace for today's support. Squarespace is your number one place for creating, managing, and growing a beautiful online presence. Browse their many website templates to get started. They can be customized to your needs and style. Using this feature here, you can preview what the site is gonna look like on different devices. Also, Squarespace makes it now super easy for creators to monetize their content in ways that fit their brand best. With member areas, you could, for example, unlock a new revenue stream by offering bonus video content, such as online courses, 
Also, check out their 24-7 award-winning customer service. Go to squarespace.com slash minarome and use code minarome for 10% off your first purchase of a new site or domain. Thank you so much again for being here. I'll talk to you soon. I hope you hope you had fun here today. Bye. Meaningless love, a crush. Maybe just an idea of a